Let's get right into it. 10. The three-second snap judgment. Your brain decides if someone's attractive in less than time it takes to sneeze. We're talking 100 to 300 milliseconds. That's faster than you can say, wait, let me think about this. Evolution basically handed you a lightning-fast attraction calculator that runs on autopilot, scanning facial symmetry, body language, and a thousand micro-details you're not even consciously aware of. Here's the kicker. Your rational brain, the part that prides itself on making informed decisions, doesn't even get invited to this party. It shows up late, after the verdict's already been delivered, trying to reverse engineer reasons why you're suddenly fumbling your words. Your subconscious did all the heavy lifting while you were still trying to remember if you brushed your teeth that morning. So yeah, love at first sight? More like, my primitive brain made an executive decision in the time it takes a hummingbird to flap its wings twice. 9. Pupil dilation doesn't lie. Picture this. You're talking to someone, and their pupils literally expand when they look at you. Not because the lights are dim, because their brain is screaming, more of this, please. When you're attracted to someone, your pupils can dilate up to 45% larger than normal. It's like your eyes are trying to drink them in, quite literally. And here's where it gets weird. Other people subconsciously notice this. Studies show we find people with dilated pupils more attractive even when we can't consciously tell why. It's this bizarre feedback loop where attraction makes your pupils bigger, which makes you more attractive, which probably makes your pupils even bigger. Your eyeballs are basically doing all the flirting while you're standing there trying to think of something clever to say. The ancient Chinese merchants knew this trick centuries ago. They'd watch buyers' pupils to figure out how badly they wanted something. Your body's out here selling you out one pupil at a time. Number eight, the similarity attraction effect, or we're all secretly narcissists. You know what's deeply unsettling? We're basically attracted to people who remind us of ourselves, not in an obvious, like, we both like pizza way. I'm talking facial features, mannerisms, even the cadence of speech. Researchers have found that couples often look weirdly similar, and it's not because they morph into each other over time like some kind of relationship Pokemon evolution. Your brain sees familiar traits and goes, oh, I know this face. It's a variation of my face. It's called assortative mating, and it's your DNA's way of playing it safe. Shared genetics often means shared values, compatible immune systems, and a better shot at those theoretical future offspring surviving. Romance? More like advanced pattern recognition with extra steps. But wait, it gets weirder. People even tend to be attracted to others whose names start with the same letter as theirs. Someone named Sarah is statistically more likely to swipe right on Steve than on Marcus. Your subconscious is out here playing alphabet matchmaker while you think you're making independent choices. Basically, we're all just walking around looking for slightly different versions of ourselves to date. Freud would have a field day with this. Number seven, the scent of genetic compatibility. Forget cologne and perfume for a second. Your natural body odor is doing way more work than you think. There's this thing called the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or MHC, which is basically your immune system's fingerprint. And somehow, somehow, you can smell it on other people. Women, especially during ovulation, are insanely good at sniffing out men whose MHC genes are different from theirs. Why? Because genetic diversity in immune systems means healthier kids. Your nose is literally playing genetic matchmaker, running compatibility tests, while you're just thinking, huh, they smell nice. The famous sweaty t-shirt study proved this. Women smelled shirts worn by different men and consistently rated the ones with the most different MHC genes as the most attractive. One woman even said a shirt smelled like her boyfriend. Turns out his genes were the perfect opposite of hers. Meanwhile, the shirts that smelled wrong or related, those guys had similar MHC genes. So if someone says you have chemistry, they might literally mean your immune systems are flirting at a molecular level. Your body's out here doing lab work while you're trying to figure out if that text was flirty or just polite. Six, 
The red dress effect isn't a myth. Women wearing red are perceived as significantly more attractive and sexually desirable. Not pink, not burgundy, red. Across multiple cultures and studies, men rated women in red as more appealing, and they were willing to spend more money on dates with them. The color red triggers something primal in the human brain, probably because it's associated with fertility, health, and biologically ready-to-reproduce signals. But here's the twist. It works both ways. Women also find men more attractive and higher status when they wear red. It signals dominance, power, and confidence. Athletes wearing red have even been shown to win more often. Their opponents subconsciously perceive them as more threatening. Your wardrobe is basically sending subliminal messages, and red is out here yelling, Notice me! in evolutionary uppercase. Fashion isn't shallow. It's psychological warfare disguised as personal style. 7. Proximity and familiarity breed attraction. You know what's tragically unromantic? Most people fall for whoever happens to be nearby. It's called the proximity effect, and it's why so many relationships start at work, school, or the gym. Your brain doesn't care about destiny or fate. It cares about convenience and repeated exposure. The mere exposure effect is even more brutal. The more you see someone's face, the more they become attractive. It's not because they're getting hotter, it's because your brain starts categorizing them as safe, familiar, and probably not a threat, which somehow translates to dateable. You could be sitting next to your future spouse in a coffee shop every Tuesday for six months and your brain's just slowly warming up to the idea like a frozen computer loading a program. There's a reason right person, wrong time is such a painful trope. Sometimes attraction is just logistics. You are in the same room enough times for your brain to go, all right, fine, I'll release the dopamine. Fate? Nah, just strategic seating arrangements and neural shortcuts. 4. Mirroring and matching. Ever notice how people who are into each other start moving the same way? They lean in at the same time, cross their legs in sync, pick up their drinks together like some weird choreographed dance. It's called mirroring, and it's one of the most reliable signs of attraction that your body does without your permission. When you like someone, your brain activates mirror neurons that make you subconsciously mimic their body language. It's a rapport-building trick left over from our tribal days when mimicking others signaled trust and group cohesion. Now it just makes you look like you're in a slow-motion TikTok duet you didn't sign up for. And people notice when you mirror them, even if they can't explain why, it makes them feel understood, connected, and comfortable around you. Salespeople and therapists use this trick intentionally. You're out here doing it by accident every time your crush scratches their nose and suddenly you need to scratch your nose. Your body's running covert ops to make someone like you while your brain's still Googling how to flirt. 3. The Stress Attraction Link, or Why Roller Coasters Work Here's something deeply manipulative that your nervous system does. It confuses physical arousal with romantic attraction. Your heart's pounding, your palms are sweaty, adrenaline's pumping, your brain goes, oh, we must be in love, when really, you just ran up four flights of stairs. This is called misattribution of arousal, and it's why first dates at horror movies, theme parks, or anywhere mildly dangerous are weirdly effective. That study where they had men cross a scary suspension bridge? The ones who met a woman on the wobbly, terrifying bridge rated her as more attractive than the guys who met her on a stable bridge. Their bodies were freaking out, and their brains just blamed it on attraction. Your nervous system can't tell the difference between I'm scared and I'm into this person. It's all just elevated heart rate and sweaty palms. So technically, you could make someone think they're falling for you just by taking them somewhere stressful. 2. The halo effect makes hot people seem perfect. Attractive people don't just look good. They get treated like they're smarter, kinder, more trustworthy, and more competent, even when there's zero evidence to back it up. It's called the halo effect, and it's basically your brain's way of being incredibly lazy. This person has a symmetrical face, so they probably also have a good personality and excellent tax filing skills. That's the logic. 
Studies show attractive people get better job offers, lighter prison sentences, higher tips, and more benefit of the doubt in arguments. Teachers even grade attractive students more leniently. Your face is literally a cheat code in society. But here's the darker side. If you're attracted to someone, you'll rationalize their red flags into quirky personality traits. He's not emotionally unavailable, he's just mysterious. She's not rude, she's just confident. Your brain's out here doing PR for someone's flaws because their cheekbones are doing the heavy lifting. The halo effect is why toxic relationships sneak up on people. You're not wearing rose-colored glasses. You're wearing a full VR headset programmed by your hormones. 1. Dopamine turns you into a temporary lunatic. Let's talk about why early-stage attraction feels like a mental illness. Because chemically speaking, it kind of is. When you're newly attracted to someone, your brain floods itself with dopamine, the same neurotransmitter that lights up with cocaine use. You get obsessive thoughts, you can't sleep, you check your phone every 12 seconds, you lose your appetite. Congratulations, you're basically a functional addict. Your prefrontal cortex, the part responsible for logic and decision-making, shuts down. That's why you make absolutely unhinged choices when you're into someone. I'll text them 17 times in a row. That's normal, right? No, it's not. But your brain doesn't care because it's too busy swimming in neurochemicals. And here's the truly cruel part. This phase is temporary. That dopamine rush lasts anywhere from six months to two years max. Then it fades and you're left looking at the person you moved across the country for, wondering why you thought their obsession with true crime podcasts was charming instead of mildly concerning. Attraction isn't a feeling, it's a neurological hijacking. Your brain borrows you for a while, makes a bunch of questionable decisions, and then hands you back the keys like, good luck with that. That's all for today. I'll be making more videos like this, so subscribe if you don't want to miss them.